All right, today we're talking about social media and how to build healthy habits with all of these platforms, a healthy relationship between you, social, how you can use it to help your life, how to take time away from social, all of that. So let's hop in. Now, social media, there's been multiple studies that it is tied to feelings of inadequacy, loneliness, depression, self-harm. There's a lot of information out there about how it's negative. Now, COVID only took this to another level when people were in their homes, on their phones for endless, endless hours almost looking at TikTok, YouTube, mindlessly scrolling. And if you think about it, right, how many videos have you seen in the last day? Or two days and what do you remember this is one of the issues with social it can cause us to sit there and time goes by we look up and whoa 20 minutes two hours whatever has gone by and it's dangerous so i want to talk a little bit about how to build healthy boundaries with social media and give you some rules that you can live by and hopefully implement into your life so why me right why does it matter well i run a social media agency i've worked in social media for 11 years i have seen the good the bad the ugly, you name it. I was one of the OG Facebook users, 2006 in college on Facebook. And it was wild. And this, you know, it was this wild, wild west of platforms. And oh my goodness, we could share all of this amazing content. And I didn't even know, you know, what it was really, but it sucked me in. I think a lot of people who are my generation, we got sucked into social and we spent a lot of time on those platforms and we still do. Then you had COVID hit. I'm guilty as much as the next person. I was spending six to seven hours a day on social media and not in the way that I should have been using it with regards to my business, to network, to create content. No, I was mindlessly consuming content. So that's what I want to talk about today is how to give you the toolkit to see social in a positive light, but also so that you have boundaries set up with social media that actually help your life. Because I want you to remember one thing and one thing only if you take away from this video. If you're not using social media, it is using you. So what that comes down to is putting intention behind behind our social media use, not impulsively grabbing our phone and scrolling, but actually setting up dedicated times to use social, especially if you're in a business, using it for your business, to send the DMs you need to send, to create the content or post the content that you need to do, not getting sucked into, you know, I call it a TikTok hole where I'm just sitting there mindlessly scrolling. So we're gonna get into how to avoid that. All right, so the first rule for healthy social media, one, forget the numbers game. Stop worrying about chasing the algorithm, likes, comments, shares, all all of that superficial stuff. When you approach it, that you are just going to post the content that you find interesting, or you're going to engage with the content that you find interesting, it becomes a weight off your back. They've also shown that being obsessive over things like likes and shares is really negative on our self image. And you see this a lot when people post and then they delete right after if that post doesn't get enough likes or enough comments, they're deleting content and taking it down. So they're putting their self worth out into the masses to be judged when we should be secure of that content and think it's secure of what we're putting out there and not care if people like it. So that's the first thing. Throw the numbers to the side. Number two, embrace digital minimalism. All right, what's digital minimalism? Sounds really trendy, but it's really simple. Your feeds are in your control. So what you should do is block, mute, unfollow any accounts that are not helping your well-being. This is you having your hands on the steering wheel of your feed. If you don't, the algorithms will take it and they will serve you up content that is not going to be for your well-being. Things like this, this is like local news news, anything political, you know, my own feeds, I had to mute, I muted CNN, Fox, Trump, BLM, anything that was super contentious, like I didn't want to see that on my feed. I know it's out there and I'm going to get news and I read the New York Times when I elect to, but I don't want surprise stuff popping up in my feed that, you know, makes me mad at society. Or I don't want to see somebody who's annoying from high school on my feed that I'm like have a weird, you know, reaction to or jealousy or whatever it may be. So really cleaning up your feed, that's on you. It's a constant, constant work. And you can also hack your feed a little bit. So say you want to see more work workout videos, right? Actually go and type into Instagram, hey, fitness videos, go watch a bunch of videos, like them and follow a bunch of fitness people. Your explore page and the content for you will actually start to become, you know, fitness or cooking or whatever you're interested in, but it can be a little bit more of a positive experience, you know, with that exploration content that you see. 
All right, rule number three for healthy social media habits, set boundaries with social. So one of the things you can do is actually setting time limits daily for certain app usage. So I only wanna do 30 minutes on Instagram or 30 minutes on TikTok, whatever it may be. The other thing I recommend doing is actually scheduling time in your calendar. So maybe that's 30 minutes at night, seven to 7.30, I'm gonna be on social media guilt-free, scroll all the videos I want, you name it, but then at 7.30, I'm gonna have an alarm go off to just remind me to put the phone down, to actually cue me to make another decision. Now, I might say, hey, screw you alarm, I'm really enjoying this, and stick on social, or more times than not, what it does is it actually reminds me, hey, time to put the phone down. So it stops with the impulsive grabbing of the phone and checking social media. Having my phone in another room during the day also helps, but really, really setting time where this is gonna be my intentional time to use socials, very, very important. All right, number four for healthy social media habits. Don't be vanilla. See, the world wants you to be vanilla on social. It wants you to agree with everybody and, you know, get behind the rah-rah, whatever that outrage is on that day or whatever the positive thing is that day. You are allowed to have an opinion. It is your opinion, right? Your lived experience is worth something and you've seen things with your own eyes. You've read things. You're allowed to have an opinion and put worth behind it, right? I think about this all the time is like, who are we giving veto power to in our feeds? Are we giving it to the masses? Are we giving it to everybody who's either loves a politician or hates a politician or takes a side on an issue, you know, so brazenly, we don't have to do that. We can decide to have our own opinions, put that out there. And if some random user on the internet doesn't like your content, who cares? Because they ain't paying the checks. So what does it matter if somebody leaves a negative comment, goes off on you on Twitter, or YouTube, whatever? A lot of times those people are just projecting. They've never actually put content out themselves. So don't worry. My whole thing and the way I look at it is this. I have an opinion. I think it's worth something. I believe in it. It's mine. And I'm going to put it out to the world. And if, you know... You like it? Cool. Stick around. And if you don't, that's okay. I'm not for you. There's a million other people on here and other channels for you to go check out. And just taking that mentality of like, I know I'm not for everybody. I'm not on here to try to sell ice cream. And what I mean by sell ice cream, if you selling ice cream is the idea that you can make everybody happy on here. But the funny thing is people who sell ice cream, shit, some customers are lactose intolerant. So even they can't make everybody happy. So don't worry about trying to please everybody. Have an opinion. Don't be vanilla. That will help you so much of just knowing, hey, I'm going to put stuff out and it's cool. All right, the next thing you can do, this one is actually coined by Joe Rogan. It's called the post and ghost, AKA post and then close your phone. Go get away, put your phone in the other room. One of the things I like to do is actually use a social media scheduler. So my content is scheduled a week in advance. I don't really know exactly when things are going out, but that helps me because I'm not sitting there waiting for instant reactions and comments from people on my feed. Goes out in the world, I check the comment the next day. Hey, that's great, cool, I can re decide to respond or not. And that's something that has been really, really good instead of sitting there waiting for reactions from posts. All right, next up, the 24-hour rule is your friend. Now, you've probably heard this from a grandparent or a family member, or a close friend, whatever it may be, and you've had a big decision or something has been stressed out. Maybe you've gotten a fight with somebody and they said, hey, sleep on it. Well, this is actually amazing advice because when you get somebody who comments on your feed or says something that you don't agree with, our response is immediately that we want to go back at them. We want to comment. We want to say something. This is emotionally charged. A lot of times it's impulsive and not thought through. What I highly recommend doing, making a rule that you are going to wait 24 hours to respond to anything on social media. This is because by going to bed, you actually release a hormone that will help you relax and process whatever that emotion was the day before. All right. And my last tip is to take a digital detox. This is where you delete the apps from your phone, put the phone in the other room. A detox can be half a day, it could be full day, one day a week, it could be a month from taking a break from these platforms. But honestly, taking a break and getting out into the real world is going to help you. And getting away from the screens just in general will help you have a healthier relationship and realize that you don't need to be dependent on social media, on this content, on being connected at all times to feel good. You know, And you'll actually notice that the more time you spend away from these platforms, the better you're going to feel. So that's something that's interesting. I run the, you know, I run a social media agency. I think there's a lot of good in social. I still think there's more good than bad, but it really comes back to that idea that we need to use social media and we need to do so with intention. All right, that's it for this video. If you like this, please like and subscribe. That really helps the channel out. We're trying to grow this. If you have anything that you want to add, anything that's helped you, you know, with managing your relationship with social media, drop it in the comments. I'd love to hear how you do it. All righty, till next time. Take care.